special episode that's going to reveal who we really truly are. <laughs> Which is a couple of sick narcissistic fucks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Speak for yourself. I scored low on the narcissist test. Just You saying. just told me your journal matches my journal. <laughs> and if your journal matches my journal. Well, I've evolved a lot as a person over the years. This is spanning from me being 18 to like 22. And I would say that was when I was the most crazy I had ever been with every year I become a little more sensitive mm-hmm, a little mm-hmm. more emotional think a little bit more about everything I say and my interactions with right. everyone <laughs> so before we get too deep hello everybody and welcome, welcome back. back to another episode of the zip I'm Ryland Adams of course joined by Elizabeth home okay hello hello we have a very special episode for you probably more special than our average episode because we're really diving deep not only into our past but also into our friendship Oh, really? Yeah. So we're first. You always be surprising me on this show. (laughs) We're first going into our journals. This one's literally titled Journal. Mine's not. And then I also saw this game was going kind of viral. Oh, Um, cool. We're not really strangers. And I got the friendship edition. So that will be um, the later half of this podcast. And there's like three different phases. It's going to be really fun. We're going to get deep with each other. Um, But I thought we could start by sharing. And this was all prompted by Lizzie seeing a journal. Carrie Underwood? Yeah, she posted her journal entry on Instagram from like the day or day one of the days uh, around her winning American Idol. I wish I did shit like that. What? Journaled like a normal person. What do you mean? Like I, my journals have never been like specifically like today I woke up, I ate a banana, I went to the gym. You know, I never like write like that. I'm always journaling to save my fucking life. So it's like every journal page is an affirmation <laughs> that I'm not sure I believe yet. So it makes me sound like a crazy person who's self-obsessed, but really I'm like an insecure bitch who's on the brink of fucking jumping. So it's like, no, don't jump. You're great. You're beautiful. Yeah, so I haven't done this in a long time. Like my early 20s, it was a lot of inspiration. It was a lot of obsessing to become. Yeah. It was I a place where I would go to try to get get inspired but then also um really dive into my dark days and i feel like Mm -hmm. i would journal on days i felt defeated more than the positive days and there's even some posts and posts there's even some entries in here where i'm like i i journal when i'm happy too like these things went good today it's not all sad (laughs) is this the journal i wrote in yeah it is it is Mm -hmm. it's somewhere in here i can post a picture of the asset oh right from the back ryland you are so good at what you do you are perfect perfect xoxo lizzie But yeah, like mine starts with just a bunch of quotes. I have like cut out clips. I said like, what are you going to do to further your acting today? (laughs) I have been here too when I realized uh, that I wasn't a good actor and that I was a great host and I felt inspired to become just that. One of the first notes I have in here is like Jill notes. So like when someone would read something I had written, I would take notes in my journal about it. But it's very funny. And it's just Jill's first reflection upon me is constant pant shitting. You shit your pants so much. It's a little like inflation. Like it, it doesn't matter anymore. (laughs) I would argue that both inflation and shitting your pants still matter. Thank you. (laughs) Like you should get hold of it. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Um, I would give anything to shit my pants right now, bro. I have been constipated for a week. Yeah, that. Flying. And I've got Vasa so I'm not trying to go out like Elvis. <laughs> that dude died with a month's worth of shit stuck in his track on the toilet trying to poop. Really? I swear to God. I was going to ask if that would be depicted in the movie because I do feel like constipation <laughs> really is like... <laughs> they glamorize it. <laughs> no, it's not glamorized. I feel like it just, it, it really weighs on a person. Like if yeah. I don't poop for one day, I feel like I can't be my utmost version of myself. No, I'm not thriving. I think I'm going to do the chia seed challenge, see if it flushes my system. What the fuck is that? I saw on TikTok that if you eat two tablespoons of chia seeds in water with lemon juice, <laughs> you will shit instantaneously. No. I swear. I'm going to need you to make a TikTok debut for this. I've been on TikTok. Okay, but like make a video doing that because if it doesn't work, I'm going to... TikTok's canceled. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. So do you have like a standout journal (laughs) entry that you wanted to share with the class? Mine is like a lot of planning. Like I wrote out all the casting directors and agents I could submit to. Um, So a lot of mine in the beginning was just like plotting how I was going to make something big of myself. 
I can close my eyes. I can feel success and it tastes so great. The air is clear. My world is upside down and nothing I can do but smile because I made it. I made it to where I've always dreamed of as my reality. Oh my See, God, I was like doing, you're a flowery ass bitch. I was doing the like manifesting as though it had already happened. Same. You were too? I mean, I was. I found one that's more like, I didn't realize this, but uh, there, this I just found an entry that's more of like a day in the life of Lizzie. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of mine are that, like what you just did. Okay, well, I'll go to a dark post of mine. <laughs> what? No, do you have a good one? It's, it's not necessarily good. It's just one of the sad affirmations. You are great. You are love. You are from a place. Oh, you act from a place of joy and hope and wonder. I am proud to be me. I love who I am. <laughs> the dark part is this isn't that long ago. No, I've been in a dark place. <laughs> what did we talk about last week? Sad girl things. Jesus Christ. 2016. I mean, it's not It's not recent. I but. am proud to be me. I love who I am. I am dark and curious and silly and light and capable and beautiful. No one thinks like me. I no love one Joe. No thinks like me. <laughs> I love Joe. And then I used to sign off every journal entry, Rob believes in me, because the director of that improv program that you think is a pyramid scheme. <laughs> I, I'm part of this improv group. But you say that like i know lizzie isn't actively performing an improv so she no i don't actively perform in anything anymore in the podcast right uh you posted like a a screenshot of an upcoming turbine performance. turbine <laughs> art I collective just, i replied to like, lemley this summer are you part of an mlm now like what's going on because i know she's not performing so i was like what are you selling no but i do have to say like the turbine art collective that's summering at the noho lemley mm-hmm um, I don't even know if it's the no hole Emily. Just look at my profile. <laughs> I'm really bad at plugging this MLM. That's why I'm poor. But the guy who runs it, the director of the program is a man named Rob Watsky. And Rob used to say to me, like, Lizzie, I believe in you. And Rob's like a funny guy. Like, he's very practical. He's not overly expressive. So when Rob told me he believed in me, I was like, I'm going to be okay. Sometimes all it takes is one. Like I have very pivotal, I have two instances where people said things to me that really propelled me moving forward. Like even before I left Colorado in the first place, Mm -hmm. like one of my best friend's parents were like, if anyone could be an actor, I think it could be you. And he said it like kind of jokingly, but it really did stick with me. And then another one of my mom's (laughs) friends was like, he was teasing me and he definitely didn't mean it, but I took that to heart and boy, did I ride it hard. And another one of my mom's friends at one point was like, I could see you being like, like Ryan Seacrest and doing his jobs. And I was like, you know what? I see that too. And those have always stuck with me. Mm -hmm. So, and then I don't know, I think things like that, like, yeah, well, that's what I started signing my, every single time I'd sign off my diary and Rob believes in me. Rob believes in you. (laughs) (laughs) XO Lizzie, the shining star. (laughs) Sad. I love how, yeah. Okay. Uh, So this one is titled feeling. This is before I was out. I never like uh, yours really, are like artsy. I never journaled really about how I was feeling often, like in terms of like coming to accept myself. And I think I blacked out that period of my life because I always feel like coming out for me was just easy, but in retrospect, it wasn't. Um, so I said, "How can I accept myself when I can't even write on paper what I'm feeling because I'm scared to coming out?" Oh. I still remember the first person I came out to, too. I shared a studio apartment. Have I already told you this story? Mm-mm. And I shared a studio apartment, and we were both in our beds about to fall asleep. And I just kept being like, I think I have to tell you something. And then I, it like went back and forth without me being able to say it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I don't know, maybe could you say it? <laughs> and then eventually she was like, You're gay. Are you gay? And I was like, Yeah. And I don't then, know, maybe you could, Rylan, you yeah. sweet bear. So then this journal entry says, Art imitating life today. I read for a movie I needed. I want to embrace this character to feel what I've been longing for in my own life. It's it's something that I needed. I'm crossing my fingers. Um, almost regret not going high. <laughs> what does that mean? Because when I would smoke, I would feel like I could really embody characters oh. in like an insane way. Like I Crazy. could, I could lose. I mean, and that's what I think drinking and smoking does for a lot of people. Like you lose your inhibitions. Yeah. And so I felt as though when acting, if I got stoned, I could really lose my identity and my isms Mm -hmm. and become somebody else and have their personality, which is really dark, like not a good place to enter acting. But I was like, wish I would have gone high. (laughs) (laughs) Also had an IHOP commercial audition and skipped out 
on my work. Uh, went to a movie with friends. Great day. Good night. Cute. <laughs> Cute. Do you have one for us? I mean, like this one, I could, I totally forgot. I don't know if we've ever talked about this. This one's titled just a journal entry. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would have dated mine more. A few of mine have dates, but a lot of them do not. Today, I had the pleasure of bringing my grandpa two bear claws and an apple fritter. (laughs) (laughs) I saw him yesterday as well. It was Monday because I missed our Sunday visit. He lights up when I'm in the room and I can uh, not help but to feel saddened by this. He is so sweet and he has been so abused. Together we laugh, but my heart aches for an elder for an earlier opportunity to do right by this human. He is human and he ought to be loved. So my grandpa, it's kind of like a sordid past. He's my mom's dad, but he abandoned my mom and her family when she was 13. So I never knew him until I was 23. Mm. And when I met him, it was like, it's it's a frivolous meeting of a stranger, you know? And he was cognizant at the time or lucid or whatever. And I gave him my phone number and I was like, if you ever want to, you can call me. So he put my number in his wallet. And then he came, uh, he was in an accident and nobody talks to this man because he abandoned all of his children. He like started a family, left it, started another family, Uh. left it, lived as a hermit for a really long time and then resurfaced. Yeah. So when he was in the accident, the only phone number that they could find on his person was mine in his wallet. So I was like 26 But this was probably when I was 24 because I remember I was living with my girlfriend Mallory when I got the call that he was in the hospital at UCLA and needed somebody to come get him and that he had like full-blown dementia. And you don't know this man, essentially. but he's my family. So like Mm -hmm. I couldn't leave him high and dry. So I actually went to UCLA. And then from that point on, I was his legal guardian. And we had to, like there was a bunch of, like he had none of his affairs in order. I had to figure out how to get his money from his account because I had no money like I was paying to live on a couch like I couldn't bring him home because I didn't have a home Mm -hmm. and um you know with the help of social workers because I was young and dumb like I realized if I wore a crop top people would help me so I'm like helping this poor old man in a crop top like stealing clothes from the clothing store I work at and spending weekends with him getting bear claws at Gelson's and smoking cigarettes (laughs) <laughs> and honestly like it was kind of fun because we're both assholes so don and i would just go be assholes around town but you know and did you learn anything great from him um i think i learned the uh i i think i learned to at this point stop the cycle of abandonment and abuse in my family like even though this man hurt most of my family i can forgive him as they could not and I can love him as as they struggled to because of the pain and um, I think that's a very valuable thing because instead of choosing to go forward with like resentment and hate in my heart I can go forward with love and like you know like the lesson of like this man left everybody and now he's left at the end of his life with no one mm. and like that fucking sucks and I don't know if any of you have ever been to a, a cheap or a state run facility for old people but it is a fucking nightmare it's really awful and it breaks your heart to know that there are people there who are wards of the state that nobody visits yeah and so you know it taught me to act lead with love yeah no that's incredible that's the only thing of value in here <laughs> on a lighter note in mine my job this is uh where we met Right now, I work at a restaurant in Brentwood called Le Bon Quotidien. We love to hear it. It's a richy breakfast place and definitely pays my bills. Our clientele equals yoga moms, rich yoga moms, and movie stars. I have waited on so many people, and, and my favorite being Reese Witherspoon. Died. That's so funny. <laughs> My favorite being Reese Witherspoon. It was. I really thought, I think I've already said, but like she ordered an iced tea lemonade and it's served in a carafe and I was like shaking, pouring it, being like. (laughs) Nervous. Yeah. Nervous. Oh my gosh, Reese Witherspoon in my presence. (laughs) She's such an icon. I love her. (laughs) I love her. (laughs) Okay, here's me trying to sort out my identity. I said, I've decided when it comes to work or my career, I can probably be the most confident person I know. 
But when it comes to actual social outings, I'm the one out or not as comfortable with my body language. I have to think about what this means in terms of who I am and what I stand for and where I see myself in the world. I missed a callback weeks ago because of work for a short film, but today the director emailed me with a viral video he wants me to do. Of course, it's a J. Beeb's parody film, but whatevs, I'm gonna look into that. <laughs> whatevs, I'm gonna look into it. The abbreviation of J. Beeb's. Of course. <laughs> Nobody wants me to be me. Everybody wants me to be the Biebs. <laughs> but I'll take it if it's a paycheck. <laughs> no, but I think uh, I was so immersed in what I was trying to do that I had lost uh, what normal people my age were doing, which was like being social and having fun mm-hmm. and going out to dinner and movies and partying. And I felt like my identity was what I was trying to do, which was work. Because if I wasn't waiting tables, I was trying to get out of waiting tables into a job I loved. So yeah. I find myself in at parties just being like, well, I don't know how to do this or interact amongst other people. I to this day don't either and I feel like that's why you and I became such fast friends because we were team get the fuck on TV (laughs) we were like never not working girls and I think that was uh, something we had in common was we liked to spend our time trying to further ourselves yeah instead of just having like that was us having a good time whereas I feel like a lot of other people their good time is like going out drinking having uh, yeah just socializing Mm -hmm. I in and I don't mind that I think because what we have is so creative and like you know sometimes for your life like getting to create something for your vlog is actually like living for me because it's not my job you know what I mean like no and I have so much fun but I also like when you took me to Six Flags it's it's so fun to also look back on to edit to have it was fun we like blacked out and fun there I do appreciate that about your vlogs (laughs) (laughs) So that's what I mean is like it was worth it to me to struggle for so long to be able to now have a job where I get to live in what I consider fun. Yeah. And I also think that that's the that's the general consensus for everyone in their 20s like it's a horror and everybody tells it to you while you're in the struggle you're like i don't know dude like i'm really not sure i'm ever gonna be okay and they're like no you'll be okay you'll hit your 30s things will just start to happen and you're like i don't know dude and they're like like, no because you're panicking now you're planting the seeds the seeds will grow they will turn into flowers you will pick the flowers and it's like wow and i'm still planting seeds and i'm still always thinking about what seeds i can plant that will bloom in a year or two or three years from now yeah we gotta we gotta you gotta keep planting seeds that's what life is Mm -hmm. but it is so interesting in your 20s when you have fucking nothing Mm -hmm. and like the fear and it's like but then the certainty of the adults the uh, the older adults around you where they're just like no chill out it's like i can't chill out yeah there is it's like a balance of the two because you want to secure a future but you also don't want to grow up so fast that you missed it yeah um i think i'm i'm sorry i'm going a lot this is like my last one but i think this is very relevant to all of this because this was December 22nd of 2011. I had been away from home for 2009, 10, 11, three years. I got back from, I was home for the holidays and I was reflecting on hanging out with all of my friends from high school and what they were doing now. And I said, I looked at my lifestyle as my friends from high school shared feelings and emotions from, from their college, their current college, things I couldn't do or bond with or relate to at all. And I felt like an old man. Because I'm the same age, but I'm like living this weird life Mm -hmm. in California. I feel like an old man, but not an accomplished one. Not being educated is not a cool thing because they're all just talking about like what their degrees are Mm -hmm. and what their job, like they're all like at the point where they were securing jobs for themselves Mm -hmm. and getting real salaries. And I was like, uh, it's not a cool thing to not be educated. And I feel like I'm missing a part of my generation. But in a weird way, it also assured me that I'm doing the right thing, which is like chasing my dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, I said, I might not be rich. Rich, and I might not be as far along as some of the people my age, but I know I need to bust my ass and do anything and everything to make uh, basically entertainment be my reality. Acting, you can say. I it. did say acting, <laughs> but I just I always felt this taking a risk on myself because when I would come home, everyone would be in there like 
salary jobs that mm-hmm. they're making now 60, 70, 80, a hundred thousand yeah. dollars a year. And I still have nothing to show for myself. I'm waiting tables at two different restaurants. Mm-hmm. And then my roommates also had real jobs. And I'd be like, what am I doing? I'm like getting older and all these people are progressing. And that's what would fuel me further to be like, I have to make something of myself mm-hmm. or I'm going to be doing this forever. Here's something I can relate to. It says on the same page. And then it's just a little guy saying, hello. Is anyone on the same page as me? No? No one? (laughs) Sad. (laughs) Do you have any, like, journal entries that you can read us? I read a couple, right? Um, Let's see. More about Rob. Oh, no, I don't want to read that. (laughs) I left out some very humiliating stuff as well. I mean, it's, like, deep, deep and dark. I left some humiliating stuff out also. (laughs) That's so funny. No, I'm sure I can find something. Because, like, a lot of my stuff is, what uh, what am I trying to say? It's, it's, It's my made up stories, which I'm actually starting to realize, like, like how we were just talking about like we like talking about work more than we like talking like anything else we Mm -hmm. like doing work more than we like anything else and like our relationship got stronger when we started working together and i don't think a lot of friends can say that but you and i love what we do so much that it like is a bonding force Mm -hmm. but i'm noticing like because i went through like 10 diaries and this was the one i picked because it had the most personal things in it and what i'm noticing is even in my journaling i prefer to talk about made up stories that I'm writing than I'd like to talk about myself and I think that that's kind of interesting I don't know what it means it's only something that I'm just now having an epiphany of but like it might be this might be another form of escapism for me like give me an example of like a made-up story what do you mean like I will do uh like a lot of this is um early jokes from my stand-up set so you would kind of do it as an inspiration board slash journal hybrid which is what Mm -hmm. i did too like i would cut and paste quotes like the amount of quotes in this thing is embarrassing like how i would just like obsess 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 over how i was going to make anything and everything work out for myself yeah like even this person like here's a quote from ryan seacrest to manifest success obsess yeah (laughs) literally (laughs) (laughs) so a lot of this is like Mm. me doing that Mm. wow fascinating i used to have this really fun idea that i still don't want to give up on called mean girl quantum leap (laughs) (laughs) which i just am like always thinking like there if there was a squad of like like i feel like this the most conniving manipulative capable people on the face of this earth are teenage girls specifically mean ones because they can plant these like psychotic little bombs in your mind and just make you feel so shitty that it's like you'll destroy yourself over a word they utter in your direction if because they know like they know the root of your insecurity and what makes you fucking feel miserable so i was like wow like we don't need assassins like we don't need the cia we don't need seal team six we need a fucking quantum leap mean girl squad that just goes back in time and like hangs out with hitler for a day and it's like they're like oh tiny man do your mama really love you or did she not really love you and he's like she didn't love me and it's like so i had a bunch of sketches that were just series of like young girls who are like in cheer uniforms hella peppy like the early oddies quintessential mean girl and they would just go into a scenario and flippantly say something nasty or like the one of the sketches i wrote that i really loved was when we this is so dorky when we were when america was developing the atomic bomb there were two different labs that were working on it there was uh, one in livermore actually which is where i grew up the lawrence livermore lab and then there was another facility that actually developed the bomb but they were in competition with each other so that one would develop it quicker than the other are in space right yeah exactly but this was both in america this wasn't us against the russians or whatever this was us against us to come up with the atomic bomb as fast as we possibly could Mm. And so in my the sketch, I have both scientist teams presenting their atomic bomb and everyone's like, ooh, ah, like so scary, so crazy. And then another doctor comes up and he goes, I've got something even worse than that. She's got the like, she's the, the meanest bitch with the hottest tits and she can throw <laughs> kicks higher than anyone I know. Meet Trixie. And she like comes in the room and like looks at the president up and down. She goes, ew. <laughs> and like they just send her off to end world war ii by just being a bitch to all of the superpowers <laughs> so that's think, what's in my thing <laughs> yeah i do think uh it, it, yes 
teenage girls can be well i i wasn't affected as much by teenage girls because for some reason they flocked to me and were nice to me because they could sense I maybe was gay. you're one of them i think i was just the gay guy so girls felt comfortable around me or you're one of them <laughs> revelations um but i still think it is tr the sentiment that uh people play on other people's insecurities is still true uh, very much so on the internet too if you reveal something that you're insecure about on the internet they will hold you that oh, to yeah. you and use it against you they'll hold you down and beat you over the head with it for time to come um also can i just take a pause yeah i feel like you and i just got caffeinated and we jumped into this like a couple of cokeheads why <laughs> <laughs> because we did i were we like wait a... everybody sit down really fast here's the podcast let's talk about kindergarten it was a really gnarly fucking time i told Does them anybody all have any cigarettes? Be a little bit of a different episode <laughs> it's a coked out fucking <gasps> crazy bitch episode <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> wait this one entry just says it's wednesday i know <laughs> i was like let's bring our diaries <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by ZocDoc. Finding and booking a doctor who's right for you doesn't need to be a terrible experience. Will they take your insurance, understand your needs, or be available to see you when you can see them? With ZocDoc, the answer can be a refreshingly pain-free yes. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. You can read up on local doctors, get verified patient reviews, and see what other real humans had to say about their visit. So when you walk into that doctor's office, you're set up to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com to choose a time slot and whether you want to see your doctor in person or do a video visit. And just like that, you're booked. Every single month, millions of people use ZocDoc and I'm one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to book and find a doctor because finding a specialist for whatever you're going through can be a tedious nightmare, but no longer with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash the sip and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z O C D O C dot com slash the sip. Zocdoc dot com slash the sip. Today's podcast is sponsored by Liquid IV, who I cannot live without. I love to jumpstart my morning with a workout, and when you push your body hard or just feel run down, it's extremely important to stay hydrated. Hydration changes everything, and it should be a priority because it makes us feel better on a day-to-day -day basis. One stick of Liquid IV in 16 ounces of water helps you hydrate two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. Liquid IV comes in amazing flavors like watermelon, lemon lime, strawberry, pina colada, and so many more. If you you're traveling, if you've drank in the night before, if you're working out, it is a great way to stay hydrated and feel great throughout your day. It contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C, with three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks. It's made with premium ingredients, it's non-GMO, and free of gluten, dairy, and soy. What makes it so efficient is its cellular transport technology, which is designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into the blood. Stream. Liquid IV is also on a mission to change the world, and they have donated 20 million servings globally. So grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code SIP at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code SIP at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com, promo code SIP. Today's podcast is sponsored by DoorDash. You've got back-to-back -back meetings, errands to run, and chores to take care of. The secret to clearing everything on your to-do list is a little help from DoorDash. You can get dinner, household essentials, and everything on your grocery list delivered. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. If you're craving late night ice cream or you forgot that one key ingredient to dinner, or maybe you just need to stock up for the week. With DoorDash, get everything in one app. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your national favorite restaurants like Popeyes, Chipotle, and even Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. The stress of the day can sometimes be too much, and DoorDash I use like a personal assistant to help me be more stress-free. I open the app, I get my food delivered, and that is just one less thing I have to think about. So for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of 15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code SIP. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code SIP. Don't forget that's code SIP for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Okay, so we're going to play the game 
uh, we're not really strangers. And I guess there's three different levels. We start with level one, which is um, perception. So level one is all about gaining perspective on how your friend sees you. It's also a test to see how well you know each other. Are answer, we going to get in a fight right now? Possibly. Jesus. With the first uh, answer, with the response that first comes to mind. Um, if you guessed incorrectly, feel free to give the actual answer. I blacked out the last part of what you just said. <sighs> I don't think it matters. Did I don't, you even retain what you just said? I don't know if I'm supposed I'm unclear on if I'm supposed to like read and ask you the question, but <laughs> we're both fucking blacked out. Okay. What's one small detail you remember about the first time we met that you pranced over to me in the, in the closet. Oh. I was in the closet and he was in the closet, was but I was I, in an actual closet. Was I coming to get a juice or was I boldly coming over to meet a redhead? I think you were boldly coming over to meet a redhead. And I feel like at that point in time or like really soon after you like spanked me but i really hate being spanked oh oh my gosh i remember because you got mad yeah and I... it's very triggering for me yes <laughs> because you like snapped at me oh and it we used were, to make me cry we didn't know each other very well no but and that then... was a phase in time when everybody was smacking each other on the ass and it was like a normal greeting but it was really upsetting well, for me that and understandably so but like as a server in the restaurant that i worked at that's how that's like oh, that was our greeting like yeah we would walk into work and everyone would slap each other's butts it which... was literally a point in time where everybody in every click was smacking each other on the butt like hey girl hey girl and it's like everybody was touching butts but let me tell you guys i do not like my butt being touched no, and she lost it you know in an appropriate way being if that's a trigger for someone but i just remember feeling like i like had shoved my foot in my mouth and didn't know how to recover from it and i was like oh my gosh i just like assaulted this person no but i was i'm sensi we recovered <laughs> we here we are imagine i just woke up from a crazy night out where did i end up and what do i regret Oof. well that's so uncharacteristically that's so if the year was 2013 it's anywhere in weho but you strap on your rollerblades and you go home and you regret not staying in your own bed and doing your fucking facial routine mm. couldn't be further from the truth really yeah because you never stayed over at anyone's house. You'd left immediately after. Oh, no. Uh, I would. I'm talking about 2013. No, now, no, no, this no. would never happen now. No. You will, You don't sleep at anyone's house now. No. Yeah. No. But yes, in 2013. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'd be wiling out. And that's what. Oh. Wow. We're goofballs. <gasps> oh, it's at 30 minutes on both. Okay. Um. Ugh. You're unpredictable. You could have been anywhere in your... No, I was either at your house with my <laughs> shoes on in your bed or in my car in front of the house I lived in waiting. <laughs> oh, today? Uh, what are we supposed... How do we answer this? Uh, well, I just don't think this applies to us today. No, we're like we don't very, go anywhere. We're very predictable and boring. Yeah. To this day, it's your house or mine. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly. <laughs> this is stupid. Ugh, can you get a good one? No. Maybe pick from the middle. Okay. It's hard to do with my nails. <laughs> what assumption did you make about me that was furthest from the truth? Ooh. I smell a fight. <sighs> I mean, I didn't realize you had an alcohol problem. Oh. You would... <laughs> that was farthest from the truth, you bitch. Well, no, because you would come... I mean, we were with each other at all times. but yeah. And you would come over and chug an entire bottle of wine. But I just... I didn't take it as... A, like, for some reason, I just thought it was normal for our age. Right. And you would be blacked out all the time. Right. And I'd just be like, she just likes to have a good time. <laughs> so funny now i'm thinking back to earlier today your dad just like pressing he's like you want to like it in oh like no thanks well the way thanks, you Bruce, stormed I'm a in, drug addict the way you stormed into the house seemed as like you might have needed one because oh, my head hurts so bad <laughs> she's like i need tylenol and i need water and so i'm like dad do you have advil liquid gels because lizzie said i'm gonna kill myself if i don't get liquid Adv Adv advil liquid gels like so specific and i said oh my god they don't have that so i'm like going through the medicine cabinet and my dad found some prescription thing from when he was supposed to have a surgery and he kept pushing them on lizzie and yeah i don't think my dad if realizes. he had asked me one more time i would have been like fuck yeah bruce crack <laughs> that shit out let's fucking let's crush it up and snort it so it hits the stream a little faster I'm, leaving, I'm like oh this is an addict so funny though 
He also really has been getting me lately because like mo- like today I needed to go pick up a light for the podcast and I needed to go over there the other day to pick up my animals. And I keep saying like, hey, dad, do you mind if I stop over? I need to come get X and X. And he'll be like, sure. And I'm like, oh, he hates me. You're crazy. That's literally the text thing that you added to the docket. Yes, because I don't know. Is there I've been seeing it go around with like a lot of adults where parents will text their kids and their kids will be like, why are you so mad at me? And they're like, I refuse to not use right punctuation because it hurts your feelings. Oh, like it's with the, the period. Sure period. Yeah. It's just like a little too. Oh, it's that's like why you, when you're texting, you need to like be over the top. So I disagree. You can't convey that. I mean, but I never feel that way with you. Yes, you do. You sent me an apology text after you sent a period at the end of a normal sentence. And I was like, I don't get it. Oh, why? but you hadn't reacted to it. Well, it's because I'm busy, baby. <laughs> Says the person that texts me all day nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was your, did you have any weird assumptions about me? No. I was a big homosexual. Yeah. Oh, wait. Did you just pull that card? Should we get deep and go to level two? Or yeah, one? let's go to level two. Let's this go is just superficial. Two. Okay. We know each other better than this. Let's go deep, deep okay. and deeper. What was my last breakup like for you? Mm. I never really seriously dated anyone. I will say that your breakup with my good friend was a devastating blow oh. in our relationship. We've already, we've already, uh, we have, but it's, you pulled the card and I'm answering. Okay. <laughs> it was devastating for me too. It, I wasn't in the right place no, in no, my no, life that's fine. to have that's a relationship. Fine. Does he ever bring me up? Yeah. All the time. Really? Yeah. He, w- he does nothing but wish you ill. Really? He won't even listen to the podcast. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> He's not thinking about you. He's married and happy. I wish him well. He's doing well. Okay. No, I'm totally joking. He literally doesn't bring you up. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, I just got exhausted. <laughs> what do you want to make more time for? What's getting in the way of that? <laughs> So am what? I supposed to answer this? Yeah. Wait, we got to read the level two instructions. Where's that little crumply paper? I don't know. Can anybody tell me how the hell to okay. do this? Okay, I can't listen to that. <laughs> I don't even know the real words, so it's partially like an original Lizzie Gordon. I guess, uh, ow, careful, my knees don't bend up. I don't know. Well, it's seriously, lost. make it up. You answer it for yourself. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I hate this game. What do you want to make more time for? What's getting in the way of that? <laughs> Um, to just really live it up. And you know what? I feel like I'm at a computer editing all day, every day. And yeah. I feel like it's really taking up my everything. So Ma- I would like to find an editor. And I know I've had offers, but it's hard for me to execute and relinquish that what feels yeah. like power because I feel like it's such a tedious long process to find the right fit and get a person to where I would like them to be to cater to my style. Mm-hmm. So it's exhausting to me. Can I make an unsolicited advice? Yeah. Structure your day a little bit more. My day's very structured. Do you have a quitting time? Um, I mean, on days that aren't the day before an upload day, yes. But then if my deadline hasn't been met, then it goes a little over. It's normal. Yeah. Sorry. What about you? What do I want to make more time for? What's getting in the way of that? Um, I'd like to make more time for my husband and I would say our polar opposite schedules are getting in the time in the way of that. Mm. I would like to do yoga with him, quite frankly. You didn't ask, but that's what I'd like to do. No, I mean, I like that. I just doing a yoga. I don't like going to yoga with other people. I feel like it's a very no, I'm personal not trying to endeavor. Fuck I'm not trying to talk to him but it's like i would like to go to yoga with him as a regular thing that we do as a couple there i said it that's a big ask is it i think so well is he ever gonna go to yoga with you dude probably not he won't even go to bed with me (laughs) (laughs) (gasps) found the directions (laughs) this is legit a cokehead episode number one put your phone away screen time is high enough this week this is level two who are you really? This round is about asking the really, the rarely asked questions and connecting on a deeper level. Okay, yeah, we're just asking each other questions. <laughs> <laughs> what are you usually wearing when you have the best time? What oh. do you always regret wearing? Oh. Oh. Um, I like wearing... This is so absurd. I want to know. 
I love wearing an oversized t-shirt, specifically my ghost bed shirt, which is stupid. <laughs> Because the bed that we have is a ghost bed, not sponsored, but they like send you a t-shirt with it. And Joe jokingly was like, do you want the t-shirt? I was like, yeah, we have the t-shirt. I love the t-shirt. I have, I have two now. <laughs> two t-shirts. Um, and I love wearing that with the tennis necklace that he bought me and some short shorts. Mm. It's insane. And what do you always regret wearing? I always regret wearing these pants, to be completely honest. They're two sizes too big, but they're cute, and they just feel bad. They make my stomach hurt. Not like physically, like they make me embarrassed to be me, and can, I can't explain it. Can you put them in hot water and and dry them on hot? No, but I could move the button over, like to here. <laughs> <laughs> this, I don't know about this game. Tell me you're uh, fading without <laughs> telling me you're fading. <laughs> stupid we've got a cinnamon roll to get to after this so we better just power through uh i uh like wearing the v-neck that i have uh 10 of in three different colors because it always just fits me right oh yeah and i always regret wearing underwear that are too tight because i can never get comfortable and i wish that i had just gone commando always instead of wearing tight underwear damn I guess I have some panties I hate wearing too. What's the most recent thing you've been influenced to buy? Skims. Really? Yeah. I bought Skims shapewear for the thong. But I gotta say, as a girly who fucks with Kim K heavy. Oh my God, we didn't even talk about the Kardashians last week. <laughs> and it was the big episode. Well, what? I don't think I've seen it yet. Sorry. Wow. I, I can't commentate wow. on it. And so when this airs, there'll have been another big episode that night where whatever. We'll have a full blown recap, maybe. But uh, okay. by then it'll be fucking ice cold. We're ice never tea. topical. <laughs> <laughs> Last week's news. Okay. So I bought the Skims thong shapewear uh -huh. in beige. Um, because often I because I like my my thick ass. But I would like to have a little bit more shapely tummy because I'm bloated all the time and I'm just trying to suck that bitch in. Mm. Um, and I've noticed that my pants feel more comfortable if I wear shapewear sometimes. But the problem is, it's like this is made for like a long torso bitch or something, but it's like the thong part goes up so high that the only part that's getting compressed is my rib cage, which there, doesn't need compressing. Are there different sizes? I got a small. Hmm. So maybe I'm an extra small, but the, I don't know because it all, it compresses weird. Cause then it also has to sit above my hips. Otherwise it ruins my hip shape. And then now I just have like a bunch of shit shoved down on top of my hips, which is unseemly. I, is that a word? Both of the things we were influenced to buy did not work out for us. What because was yours? I've really been wanting an aura ring. I honestly have been. What the fuck is the point of that? Everybody be tracking their sleep so, and shit. What does that do well, for you? It's your like. Don't you check your steps on your phone? No, I do. Like I, I know you do. I obsessively do it. I always like to make sure that I'm going more than the previous week, and I like. It's just something I like to do, and I would like to track my sleep. And I always hear them sponsoring podcasts, so I reached out to our ad agency. I was like, "Can Aura Ring sponsor the podcast?" Dead silence. Never got back to me. So Aura Ring, if you're listening. Hit us up um, because it's really I'm like, what's the point? I'd love an aura ring. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if it's free, give it to me. <laughs> no, so then I saw uh, Gucci came out with a collab with Aura Ring. Oh, yeah, get and that. And I was like, wow, this is like, I've been on the line of an aura ring for months. I And I was like, I'm just going to bite the bullet and do it. And so I did it. And I was like, you're supposed to have it on whatever finger this yeah. is. And Point your finger. So I put on ring. Uh, Shane's ring that is like the similar style that they converted into the aura ring mm -hmm. and I was like perfect I know my size and I waited for two weeks I got so excited because my delivery had arrived yeah I put it on the other day and it was too fucking big can I have it and I called and I said <laughs> I sized this to other rings, another Gucci ring. And he said, oh, well, they're aura ring sizes. And I was like, well, you did it in European sizes. And he's like, I know it's European sizes, but it's aura ring. And, I, and so I call them mm -hmm. and they're like, well, we don't have the size that you need. It's only at some stores. And did then, you return it? 
Yeah, so I returned Aww. it. It didn't work out. I, I, call, I tried calling all the stores that would have it, and then I got in a fight with the Gucci employee because he was pissing me off. This is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> you might have overshared just now. Also, well, no, he, well, let me just, can I just tell you a little bit about it? <laughs> yes. Okay, so then the gentleman that was helping me do it initially was so nice, and he called three different stores because it's no longer online. So he's like, it's only at some of the stores. I'll call the stores for you. And I was like, great. So we called three of the stores, and he was like, none of them have it. And I was like, okay, bummer. So then <laughs> On my own, I wasn't going to make him look further. So I started trying to call the individual stores that showed that they mm-hmm. had it on my own. But then when I finally got connected, the guy's like, oh, this isn't the individual store. It's only for the store. Like, you only reach our customer service, which is like our main hub. Oh, for fuck's sake. And he's like, they've already done three requests for you and they're only allowed to do one. So he already overdid what he was allowed to do for you. And I was like, don't what you want fuck? to sell rings? And why can't you just see in your computer what store has it in stock so you can ship it to me? he's like i just can't do that and i was like well i don't know why you can't do that like yeah. why can't you help me out like i obviously purchased the ring already i just want the right size mm-hmm. he's like is there anything else i can help you with and i was like well i don't think you helped me yet you said that yes wow. i was so mad did you, you have that tone of voice or did yes. you have a nasty and tone so, of voice no i said it i said it in the middle of yeah. tone and then so i'm convinced he canceled all of the requests i already had so i'm never gonna have an aura ring and i'm so sad damn so i'm that's that was me. a lot to take in. I think you asked this next one. I feel like I did two in a row. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. When was the last time you were a bad friend? What could have you done differently? Well, I guess we can bring up the beef you brought up last week. Cause that was technically the last time I was a bad friend. Mm. When I hoodwinked you into accompanying me to Sloan's to pick up my pineapple Dole Whip. And then I abandoned you. He wanted nothing to do with me. Didn't even want to stay there and eat it with me. But here's the deal. I recognized my selfish ways. She and did I apologize you a, via text. I sent you a text message. I said, listen. Listen. Ooh, I'm sorry for hoodwinking you. I don't engage with that many people. <laughs> so I don't know the last time I did somebody wrong. Have you, Did I do you wrong recently or something? No. Feels like you have something, but... I don't think so, actually. I'll let it pass. I I'll feel like, pass. should we get to number three and we can go back to two if it's yeah. not super juicy? Let's move on. No, I don't think you've ever wronged me. Wild card. Uh-oh. Buckle up. Both players set an intention for your friendship. Compare. Hmm. You know what? I am, like, so grateful for you. Like, when I watched back the vlog from Six Flags, I thought, wow, I have so much fun with you, and you're a very thoughtful, giving, caring friend. I was so scared you were about to say but, because it's make set an intention. Oh, so I would just like to continue on our path of deepened friendship. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm done with that, too. You? Same. Okay. I wouldn't mind... No, that's a crazy intention. I'm third on your call list, but whatever. No, I was going to say, I wouldn't mind moving to Colorado and being a suburban fucking mom with you. We would have so much fun. But I can't like, set that intention. There's so much that I would I love to do with you here. Like, we, if you were staying here today, the things that we could do. I know. And honestly, I thought he, I was going to be here long enough that we could go to a workout class between episodes. And the restaurants I want to try. Mm. <sighs> Okay. Actually, can I that can that that'll be my intention. What? I want to change our work trips into more fun trips. Well, if you would stay longer than I understand why you can't, but if you could stay yeah. for like uh like if we could re- record the podcast one day, hang out yeah. another cuz we do have lots of fun together. That's definitely the intention I want to set actually. Okay. Um I don't love that one. <laughs> <laughs> why? What's the last time you had a big win? How can we celebrate? Um. Ow, fuck. Sorry, I have these blisters all over my feet and I need honey to come lick them. Oh. Uh, what was my last big win? I don't know. I guess I would say my last big win was probably getting the puppy. Oh my gosh, yeah. And then um, that woman I'm riding with now. Yeah. Which is a huge win. Yeah. And we can celebrate by... I don't know. Like a little bit for me when I think about celebrating, it's like the work is the celebration for me because I love the work. Yeah. Getting paid to do the work as a celebration. Um, I don't know. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> Should I announce my YouTube channel? Oh my gosh, yeah. I got over 500 subscribers <laughs> on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Because we had been reacting to our past videos. Yeah. And honestly, you should make the ones of us unlisted or uh, public so that they can go watch what's live now. So if you go to Elizabeth Gordon on YouTube, I'll link it. Lizzie, in the dis- I think. Oh, you've changed it? Because I had that ambition at the beginning of the year of being a YouTuber. 
which I still think you should toy around with. I don't know. She has a should video. Should we just pull the trigger on it and say, like, just this week video. there's going to be a cooking video? Yeah. So if you guys could subscribe to her and support the video when it goes live, uh, we'll let you know when it's up on Instagram. Should I just make a commitment right now that forces me to do it? Well, yeah, but I, are you going to post the video that you already have filmed to get ready no. with you? You have to film a whole new one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think you should. This pick a day. <laughs> pick a day <laughs> make it happen uh i think tuesdays i upload typically on thursdays the podcast okay. is wednesdays shane uploads his podcast on sunday so i think tuesday or friday Fr- let's uh, do friday uh, well friday like people go out on fridays and then they oh. live on saturdays so not a great day for youtube tuesdays tuesdays next tuesday wow i'm gonna post a cooking video I'm excited. I'm going to make creamy Tuscan chicken. Okay, so I'll leave her link, her channel link in the description section below. <laughs> Watch we me can call all... you up from the Uber. Delete that part of the video. No, I'm not going to. So go subscribe to her channel. It might be the one and only girlies. Um, I think my recent big celebration is moving forward on Shane and I having a child. Hell yeah. There hasn't been many updates because there aren't many updates yet. Right. I mean, I'm hoping that we can uh, have a surrogate within the next like four months ideally like that would be yeah i'm manifesting wonderful. for you within the next two months everything with the egg donor is moving forward hopefully the embryos will be frozen soon and then like obviously you don't announce you're pregnant until the pregnancy is like mm-hmm. very solidified so can but, i throw you a baby shower to celebrate uh yeah okay yeah once it's like right in full motion yeah we'll but, have a baby shower yeah i mean with our timeline with like a best case scenario i'm thinking like my birthday present <laughs> will you be your baby <laughs> yeah a tourist, after this a motherfucker tourist child. shit all over my fourth of july dreams he's like i'm manifesting not and day, by manifesting i mean impregnating when i decide to is it crazy to manifest your child's sign no i think a lot of people do it okay yeah yeah gotta avoid them gemini's baby <laughs> stop <laughs> i'm married to one i'm allowed to say it yeah motherfucker's crazy <laughs> <laughs> as my girlfriend Lizzo once said it's like a threesome fucking with them every night yeah yeah another wild card do you ever Ooh. know which one you're getting nope nope <laughs> <laughs> just kidding I love him <laughs> what I don't like this okay, one okay get a new one there's no rules for us <gasps> I should have pre-selected yeah that was my intention but I lost track of time what's the best way I can show up for you when you're going through it I feel like we have the same answer for this. What? Leave me alone. (laughs) (laughs) Don't tell me you can hear me crying. (laughs) Mind your fucking business. No, I feel like we're very communicative. Like uh, when I've gone through hard things, you've actually shown up in great ways, which is just offering the support if I need it. Like I'm here if you need me. Yeah. Yeah. But I think both of us prefer... To be left alone to scream cry. Yeah. The only one I really melt down around is Shane. Yeah. Same with Joe. Yeah. Because I love being held by Joe. Oh, my God. Last night, for example, I was crying, but I wasn't scream crying. And I wasn't scream crying because I knew that James could hear me. And J- Joe was like in the room and just like hugging me being nice. And I said, I wish I could scream cry right now, but I don't want James to hear me. I, I'm starting to get concerned with how much you're scream crying. I scream cry every day. Well, here's the deal. I'm now, I'm now withholding the screams. <laughs> the funniest thing. The funniest thing was I swore to God. I like... I was positive in my heart of hearts. I was alone in the house. <laughs> no one was there. So I was just walking from room to room, scream crying at the top of my lungs from room to room. And then I turned around from the kitchen and James is sitting in the living room. How does he react to something I like that? I literally couldn't stop crying. I was like, I wouldn't be crying this hard if I knew you were here. <laughs> it was like the most pathetic moment because I couldn't draw it back. You know what I mean? I was in my field. And are you always crying about the same thing or is it? Yeah. Very... Okay. Well, I'd say the same couple things. <laughs> it's always the same couple things. It's a fucking sad time, bro. Okay. <laughs> sure. But it was, I was so shocked. I was like, <gasps> uh, what's something I don't give myself enough credit for? Oh, everything are you talking about you or me no you oh i think it was a personal question i'm Thank gonna you. do it about i don't think you give yourself enough credit for everything and i think that's why you trip about your vlogs posting 
What do you mean? Uh, like, uh. I think part of your anxiety is you don't realize that all that shit that you used to write in your journals, like those manifesting things, like mm-hmm. living it and like make making it a thing. What did you? It's faking until you make it is the dumb bitch version that yeah. I say. But I think you don't realize how much you have accomplished and how much of that is because of you. And I think that you could take a little bit more time to like take a deep breath and be like, girl. Well, thank you. I feel like I'm always on what feels to be, I enjoy the work I do, but it does sometimes feel like a never ending treadmill. Like I'm like, okay, I got a vlog up. Wow. I have another 40 hours of editing ahead of me. Yeah. So it does feel like I, I, I I do want to come up for air more, which is why I need to delegate. Like that's what I hear so many YouTubers, like we have to, you have to delegate things to be able, and I would live a more fulfilling life, you know? Like, I don't know that you celebrate your wins. I think I do. You do? Because you shit on Kim Kardashian for doing that, which makes me think if you spot it, you got it. (laughs) Like, should you? Well, no, it's just jarring to me that she's still, it's not that I want her to celebrate her successes. It's the can't believe it's me. Right. And it's like, well, I can believe it's you. Right. And I can, but like when things happen to me, I'm like, well, I can believe it's me. I've worked a decade to try to get anything right so when i get something like it's not i can't believe it i've been working forever for this it seems like your mind might be skewed to if you don't succeed you're like i can't believe i didn't do well enough but you but if but the the more positive reframe of it is girl No, I I do. I think like the Kim Kardashian state of mind is the place to be like, because if you're no longer excitable about what you're doing, it's over. Do something else. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, What about you, baby girl? I think Uh, I don't remember the question. uh, uh, (laughs) (laughs) What's something you don't give yourself enough credit for? I think how much you give to the people around you. Like, I really think you show up for those in your life in a way that is very uh, is very what's the word i'm trying to say um i guess respectable like jaw dropping to me like the way that you're able to show up for everyone in your life is incredible to me i appreciate that but i see that as i don't see that as like oh (laughs) you know what i mean like i don't see it as a pat on my back i see it as these motherfuckers showed up for me yeah so it's more so like i can't not be there because i owe them I have a I have a great debt of gratitude for those people. And that ties back to kind of your lesson with your estranged grandpa, yeah. which is like being there for others so that yeah. you're not alone. And it's also like it even was, uh, most of these people were there for me when I was a small child. So it's like I mean, even take people out of it, your yeah. dogs, like your willingness to go to four different vet appointments all an hour away from each other in one day and never complain about it. Right. But, you know, my dogs did a lot for me. Oh, I'm not <laughs> saying they didn't, but yeah. it's like never a complaint about it, which is. I'm, I'm I, for completely to be super real. I'm in a very blessed position that I don't I'm not forced into a corner and and I, I have options. Mm. And there are a lot of people who are forced into a corner and don't have options. Yeah. So I'm just incredibly grateful that I, I get the opportunity to take them to four fucking vet specialists. Yeah. Cause not everybody does. And that yeah. sucks ass. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't, again, like I think I'm, I just think I'm lucky. I think I'm lucky that there's a fucking Costco cart full of motherfuckers who showed up for me and, you know, the funny thing is, is like at, at the beginning, you don't think you're worth showing up for, right? Like at the beginning, you're just this shithead kid who's destroying everything and doesn't understand why yeah. things are going wrong. But like, you know, I just mean like, even, like the day to day tasks that have to be done. It's a lot yeah. to, I mean, it's hard to run a household, you yeah. know, to, to keep things clean, to, to stay on top of everything. And then a dish in addition, and I think that's why people's circles get smaller as they get older, because it's just do. so hard to maintain doing it all. Yeah. 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 Finish this sentence. You're the only person I can blank with. Hmm. I mean, you're the only person I would say like you and Shane and I mean, you're definitely the outside of my love relationship. I feel comfortable being 100% my authentic self with you. Like I never censor myself around you, which I can't say for everyone, you know? Yeah, I would say same. I would also say like, I enjoy chilling with you. 
Yeah, we don't. And I hate chilling. <laughs> Like I am not a chill girl, but I like chilling with you. Yeah, we don't need we're the we're those kind of girls where we don't have to like be super like it's not weird if you're staying at my house and we're not doing something. We don't have to do I something. I could sit quietly and watch you edit for a long time <laughs> from the dog's bed. Like to be completely real, I would not mind laying in Uno's bed and watching you do nothing for fucking five hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try to get one more before we have to say goodbye. <clears throat> like literally. Um, what's something that reminds you of me? <laughs> mm. Yoga. <laughs> Rollerblades. <laughs> this is sad. I love how the that. rollerblade thing is so stamped in your mind. It's like you're because never it's such a fucking visual. When you explain when you explained that one scenario to me, I was like, damn, that's an identity. <laughs> like and it was a forced identity because like my car, I, I could never tell if it was going to start or make it from point A to point B. So it's like the rollerblades, it is. They're I just reliable. think it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> like it kills me because it's such a thing. It's so iconic. Uh, I would say your animals. Like if I see an animal that's similar to yours, I'm like, hmm. Lizzie's somewhere loving her dogs right now. I do be loving on them motherfuckers. All right. I think we can sneak in one more. Okay. What are you what are you proudest of us for getting through together? <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> Our big friendship hiccup? No. What? <laughs> I can't say it. You'll have to edit it out. Yeah, I mean, being on the internet is tough. Yeah. Getting through the internet together. I would say I'll I'll say it so you have the perfect edit pickup. I'm proudest of us for getting through the internet together. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it can be challenging. Yeah. It's a hard thing to stay authentically yourself when it feels as though the world is yeah. coming at you and i guess i am eternally grateful for you that even in our darkest of times on the internet when it wasn't okay to be associated with us you stuck right by me if anyone said anything to you about it you would stick up on my behalf you never like wavered on how you felt about me no i know you i wouldn't fuck around with a bad person but i'm saying that's like rare to rare in that moment like not many people made it through that moment with you us. haven't seen my ryan expose videos <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes she will threaten like if i piss her off she'll jokingly be the like, truth about ryland adams <laughs> coming and i'm like hold on let me screenshot some things myself bitch it's always joking of course is it all right you guys thank you so much for hanging oh my gosh we're gonna run out of time again fuck fun was had by all wow we were having so much fun we forgot to exit out the show um all right you guys thank you so much for enjoying hopefully another edition of the sip let us know if you like episodes that are structured differently than the norm i feel like we did something different today. We hit the ground running. It was dangerous. Sprinting. I don't know if it was great. Tumbling. But hopefully uh, you found some pleasure inside of it. Uh, if you want to follow us on social <laughs> that media. <sounds> so <laughs> sexual. I hope that you were able to blow your load inside of this episode. I wonder if anyone's ever done that to our podcast, like while they're listening. Have you ever jacked off to our podcast? I don't think ever to a podcast in general. That, mm. Do you? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna overshare. Okay. When I lived in an apartment with a lot of people, and I would I wanted privacy while I was jacking off, and I didn't have headphones, I would put on a really loud show on my TV, like Doogie Howser or something. <laughs> I just go at it. But then I met this guy who was in Doogie Howser, and he came on in the episode, and it ruined everything. What happens though if they think you're just watching TV? All these people that are around you and just bust through the door. That's the other thing that I thought was like, do they know that like Doogie Howser means I'm jacking off? <laughs> Cause that's fucking weird. Do they think I'm jacking off to Doogie Howser? Cause I'm not. That's just for my privacy. You know what I mean? That's my white noise. Uh, all right, you guys. Well, don't forget to follow us on social media at the Sip Official. We're also on there personally. Go subscribe to Lizzie's YouTube channel. Cause this might be the one and only video I ever post. Let's see how hard you go for it. I'm Let's putting no pressure. If Let's... I fail, there's no pressure on this. We're all gonna laugh. Let's celebrate the wins, and hopefully, it's just that. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging around with us. We'll see you next week, and love you very much. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's the sip. sip. Ah. Wow, what a scary thing. Ah.